our last version of the story is actually going to be the closing statement of Mr. B. B. Wolf's lawyer at the trial. <laughs> Criminal trespassing was the charge and attempted murder. Very serious charges. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I would now like to present to you Mr. B. B. Wolf's a version of this story because Though the prosecutor seems to have made a fairly certain case uh, before you, and I can see that you have been moved by his great words, I need to point out some facts and lay out some facts before you to let you know that, to help you realize that much of the prosecutor's case was circumstantial in nature. Much of his evidence was circumstantial. So, I'd like to start first with my client's name, B.B. Wolf. B.B. does indeed stand for Big Bad, and that, my friends, that, my friends, was his mother's dream. His mother thought any good name, any wolf would be proud to be called B. Big Bad. Big Bad. Well, let me tell you, that was no, no picnic for Mr. B.B. Wolf. Mr. Wolf had trouble all through school trying to live up to that name. Every, every wolf came up to him and said, Mr. Big Bad, huh? You want to fight? Let's see how big and bad you are. Come on. Well, Mr. Big Bad Wolf had some troubles. He was always getting into trouble, always getting into fights, trying to defend himself against all those people that wanted to fight and show off they were, how strong and how big and bad they were. Well, it wasn't his fault, I promise. So that's the beginning. Eventually, Mr. B.B. Wolf actually took over the forest around this neighborhood and kind of took it over as his own. He thought, you know, these big bad wolves have been bothering me, these other wolves have been bothering me so much I'm going to get rid of them all. And I'm going to protect the people and the creatures in this forest as if they were my own brothers and family and sisters and family, my family, including the people and the villagers. So on this day, on this day, Mr. B.B. Wolf indeed did stop Little Red Riding Hood. And she actually could understand Wolf. But I would like to point out that Mr. B.B. Wolf did not speak and does not speak very good English at all. So what most people hear is a series of growls. So Miss Riding Hood's version was correct. Mr. Wolf did come and say, where are you going? And did indeed follow her, but that was because he had heard that there was another one of his big bad wolves that had come back into the neighborhood and he wanted to make sure that she was there safe, got it all the way, made it all the way to grandmother's house safely. So the next step he did was follow the entire trail to grandmother's house. Went quickly and he scoured and he looked and he sniffed and he smelled everywhere. And he indeed did find the other wolf hiding in one of the corners of the forest. He chased that wolf off and then went to grandmother's to make sure that everything was well. Well, again, he opened, knocked on the door and tried his best to speak English, but it came out mostly in wolf. <laughs> And poor grandmother probably was indeed scared, as I believe she, unlike her granddaughter, did not learn wolf in school. <laughs> well, it is a different generation. So, Mr. Wolf then thought to himself, well, I would like to make 
make sure that grandmother, when she does come around, maybe when Little Red Riding Hood gets here, she can clear up the story. So he said, maybe I'll just take a nap. Well, Miss Riding Hood's grandmother had been doing laundry that day. And so, when he lay down on her bed and was awakened by Little Red knocking on the door, he was a little nervous and, you know, distracted. He was in the wrong place for a big bad wolf, and he wanted to make his best presentation, but he was distracted and did not realize that he had rolled around in the laundry and had what appeared to be put on some of grandmother's pajamas. No, this was not the case. The wolf was not specifically putting them on. They just happened to cling to his fur after he had wakened from a nap. So, finally, Finally, I would like to point out that as soon as the woodcutter came, the big bad wolf had, being the almost ruler of the forest, had seen the woodcutter many times and he knew that all was well. The mother, the grandmother, and the daughter, the granddaughter were safe, and so he made his exit, said goodbye in wolf, and off he went out. Story, and it is my understanding that the wolf and the 